Welcome to tonight's Career Fusion Partner Webinar featuring American Eagle Instruments. Career Fusion is a year-long membership for clinicians who are looking to increase their platform, increase their footprint, and to just know more about a lot of different things. Career Fusion is networking that works and group mentorship that allows you to become a mentor and find mentors who are going to help you move on in your career. Not just move out of your clinical career, Career Fusion offers people who want to stay chairside with opportunities to do some fun stuff like clinical trials and focus groups. So it's not just about presentations or writings. In January, we have our first meeting of the year, and that's in Daytona Beach. Throughout the year, we have other meetings online like Toastmasters, we have a Career Fusion Book Club, Center Fusion is where we bring in industry leaders to talk about business, and webinars like this one to highlight our partners, and spotlight webinars that highlight our members with special talent. Our corporate partners are looking for a variety of different kinds of people with different skills for different reasons. As you can see here, everything from operating as a territory manager to owning your own business and learning the skills you need for that. Our corporate partners range in size from Periodyne, who is a brand new company and new to even dentistry, all the way up to Crest Oral-B and their brand new toothbrush and uh, sensitivity um, stickers. Career Fusion has had American Eagle Instruments as a corporate partner for five years and we're just all in love with Lewis Myers and Katie Jones and they're so excited to learn about new hygienists and new ways to bring American Eagle Instruments to the rest of the world. So our members include people who have had their life changed by Career Fusion and I think that every time you run into somebody who has attended our meeting you'll be very surprised to learn that they are a changed person because of the meetings that they've had there and the coaching and the mentorship opportunities that they've had. My name is Shirley Gutkowski. I'm a Career Fusion coach and have been since 2008. And I'm also the author of the Purple Guide series for dental hygienists. I, offer, I also have a podcast called Crosslink Radio that uh, offers insights into health from the oral, from the, uh, from the mouth. You know, you got to start there. Our speaker today is Karen Siebert, who is a dental hygienist and also a instructor at her nearby dental hygiene program, who we'll learn more about. I'm sorry, I don't know the name of the school right offhand. She's only told me a thousand times. That's, <laughs> that's how the brain works, I guess. She has been doing special projects with American Eagle Instruments since becoming a Career Fusion member. Uh, I think it was 2013. I'd like to invite you all to type in your questions in the little question box over here on the right, and we will get to all of the questions at the end of the course. So without further ado, let's meet Karen Siebert. Thank you for all coming tonight and learning more about your clinical career and what's available and new out there for us. I want to start with a question. You've been in clinic all day. How's that dominant hand feeling tonight? After a long day of scaling with hand instruments, we sure know it can take a toll on our bodies. And there are several contributing factors when it comes to repetitive motion injuries, but one factor we know for sure is dull instruments. We have new technology in hand instrument metals, and that offers us a new option that can reduce the chances of repetitive motion injuries. So we're going to discover why XP technology can play a significant role in increasing your comfort and your patient's comfort. So my story, I am a clinical instructor and a didactic instructor at College of Lake County in Illinois. I've always been loyal to the same brand of instruments. One day while working with one of my friends who's always on the cutting edge, she insisted I try her new XP technology instruments. And I was like, I kind of blew her off, but she decided to drop them on my tray while I was working with a patient so that I would try them and figured since they were contaminated, I might as well. And I immediately knew they weren't just any other instrument when I picked them up. 
they were so incredibly sharp and just melted the calculus off with, and I was able to even lighten my grasp as I used them. So I fell in love with them very quickly. And since I've been using them, I've noticed a big difference in my own health and in less repetitive motion injuries. So I've become very passionate about sharing XP technology with my fellow hygienists and the modified technique that is used with it because it really sets it apart and gives us a new way to extend our careers through better ergonomics. And I've also seen how comfortable our patients are with them. And it does even shorten appointment time. So I've seen so many benefits I like to share with you all. So tonight we're going to look at the key to XP technology, which is a unique metal. And we're going to learn why and how it works in our favor. We're going to talk about how it works in our patient's favor. Patients really do comment on the comfort of their appointment when we use XP technology. Then we need to take care of ourselves too. So we're going to, uh, I'm going to show you some of my favorite stretching exercises, the little series that I'm going to share with you tonight. And then finally, we're going to take this to a, a point where you can talk about how to plan a business proposal to get what you want in your practice, something that hygienists don't always do. So, believe it or not, through a national study of dental hygienists that was done in 2009, 60 to 90% of us experience hand and wrist pain at some point of our career. And 44.2 have symptoms of carpal tunnel syndrome. It's a very high percentage. And we have a high risk for pain and, and agony in our industry, don't we? We'd like to bring that down a notch through better ergonomics. Some of the prevalent musculoskeletal disorders we know about are carpal tunnel syndrome. I'd like you all to, to do something for me right now, a little exercise. If you have a pen or a pencil nearby, pick it up and put it into your modified pen grasp. Then find an edge of a table and create your own strong fulcrum. Now squeeze that grasp area on the handle. Well, it's your pencil at this point. As tight as you can. You feel that median nerve being compressed at the wrist? Now shake it out, pick that pencil back up again, and then just light, put your fulcrum down and lightly grasp as if you're doing exploratory stroke. We don't feel that same pinch in our carpal tunnel area anymore. And that is what we can expect to experience with XP technology. Other musculoskeletal disorders that we are, can't seem to escape are things like ulnar nerve entrapment where the nerve is trapped as it goes through the wrist, and we end up with numbness in our ring finger and our pinky. Uh, that seems to be my body's favorite. And thoracic outlet syndrome, where you have the whole brachial plexus actually entrapped up in the shoulder area. And that leads to pain and, and numbness running down the entire arm. So, And there are other things just like tendinitis that we're tend to, we tend to be prone to. So we have a lot of possibilities for hurting ourselves in our practice. Let's do some things to try and make a difference for ourselves. So I want to ask you a question. Do you ever feel like this at the end of the day? Where you feel like you have everything you use during the day stuck in your hair and you're about to fall over? And wouldn't you really rather feel like this at the end of the day where you're happy and you're ready to move on to do something fun after work? Well, hopefully we're going to talk about some things that will make a difference for you in that area today. So let's talk about progress. Have we really seen much of it in the area of hand instruments? Progress is defined as growth or development and continuous improvement. And when you think about it, we'll talk about in a second how much we've seen in hand scaling. We know we've progressed personally. Uh, I don't know too many of you that would hand over your smartphone for this beautiful avocado wall uh, phone here. Probably, maybe a couple of you, but I doubt it. And we definitely professionally would not put up with substandard uh, self-care items that we want to offer our patients. We definitely want to be able to offer things like this, our electronic brushes. We've had other professional advances too. Now once upon a time, biofilm wasn't even in our dental hygiene vocabulary. And the advancement in ultrasonic instrumentation is one of my favorites because I went to school quite a while ago. And when I went to school, it really wasn't that long ago, I promise, 
ultrasonic instrumentation was really for only for hygienists who cut corners or weren't good enough at hand scaling to really get the job done. Can you even imagine thinking that way anymore? It's just beyond our, our thought process. So we're thinking it's time to progress a little bit from our stainless steel hand instruments because there's been an advancement that can really make a difference in our patient care, and it's called plasma and ion engineered uh, engineering surface. It's a real paradigm shift in instrumentation. So we're not talking about the same things here. We're comparing apples and oranges. Uh, let's talk about radiography. We've embraced digital imaging, and film is still in place in some offices. So they produce a similar result, but the progress of the digital gives us such a superior image to the film that we prefer the um, digital. But they are still both around, and we use them both. And we can't really compare them directly. It's kind of the same idea. You'll probably agree with me when you hear this, that a new development for hand scaling technology was way long overdue. The last significant development was when Dr. Gracie developed the Gracie line of scalers that we all know and love. That was in the 1940s. They were made with stainless steel. And very little has changed. That's 70 years ago. I have one more poll question for you here. OK, let's see. We're interested to know what brand of hand scaling instruments you're currently using. If you'll just take a second and put um, your most preferred instrument handle or name there, uh, PDT, American Eagle Instruments, Hufridi, or a combination of manufacturers, or some other brand. So we've got, wow, that was fast. People know what instruments they're using, that's for sure. Excuse me. A couple more seconds here for the people who are off changing a diaper or whatever, just listening <laughs> into the webinar. Okay, a couple more people. Let's go, people. All righty. And we'll close that and share what the survey said. 4% um, of the listeners today are using PDT instruments. 11% are using American Eagle instruments. 46% are using Hugh Freedy, and 36% are using a combination of manufacturers. 3% of the audience is using other instruments. Okay, well that's great. That's quite a, it pretty much falls in line with um, what we know about the manufacturers and um, we, it, that's great that so many of you have tried all of them really. So tonight I want to introduce you to, a, to a, American Eagle Instruments a little bit more and the XP technology that is so special. This is really, as I've mentioned, just a, a technology that has potential to make such a huge difference for us and for our patients, so I just love to share this with you. Plus, the neatest thing about it, it's sharp and free. And who can stand to pass on sharpening one day? Um, so that you understand the quality that goes into XP technology, I thought it would be nice for you to get to know American Eagle Instruments as a company a little bit. I've had the privilege of being able to go to Missoula, Montana twice now, and I've gotten to tour the factory each time. And each time I do, I'm really humbled and amazed at what they do there. Um, this company was founded in 1992. It's employee owned and there's 85 employees. Everything they make is made right there in Missoula and that's called a vertically integrated factory. I've got a cool little term I know now where raw materials come in to the factory and finished goods go out. So there's nothing that's made outside of Missoula um, with the exception of a couple of surgical instruments that are made in Germany. But, you know, I found out that there are 36 steps that it, it takes to complete one American Eagle curette. That's quite a lot. And American Eagle is the second largest dental instrument manufacturer in the world. So these are some of the pictures I took while touring in the manufacturing area. There are just a few of the 36 steps that are shown here. But my favorite picture is the one in the lower right corner. That woman sits there every day. 40 hours a week and inspect every instrument before it goes out to you, the end user, to make sure that it's perfect before it gets to you. My other favorite area of the factory is sharpening row. Uh, this is sharpening row and thanks to Emily and Trish for being part of the little course tonight. Um, these 
people also work to sharpen our instruments to that perfect factory edge before we receive them. So now that you know a little bit about American Eagle, let's explore just what plasma surface engineering means to you. Such a funky little word there. Um, because we have crazy days, and we need to have equipment that helps our days and doesn't hurt the overall outcome of the day, right? So what is XP technology exactly? Um, sounds kind of science, it sounds like it's out in space. But it is actually a patented process that surface engineers titanium nitride into high-grade stainless steel. And what happens at the end, after that goes through a process, and I'll show you a little more detail of the process, is a very hard and strong instrument. It's much stronger than our stainless steel instruments. And they're also harder than anything they're going to contact during a standard hygiene procedure. Because up in, And that's important because up until now, our standard instruments have begun to wear immediately upon use because they're made with a metal or any metals that are actually softer than the calculus they're trying to remove. So that crazy plasma engineering blah, blah, blah actually looks more like this. It's breaking down the whole process. It's about this filtering system. Uh, the titanium particles are at one end of the machine, and the stainless steel is at the other end of the machine. And through the physics of it all, the titanium nitride is uh, shot through a bunch of filtering systems with bends and turns. And basically the microparticles are positively charged, that are drug through this magnetic field, and they actually reach that high-grade stainless steel and are engineered into the surface. The larger particles aren't charged, and they are too fat to make the turn, so they never make it to the stainless steel. Now, it kind of sounds like a coding to me when I first heard about it, and I can see where that would pop into your head, too. So I like to explain it like this. Say you have a dresser that you want to uh, refinish, and you decide that you want to paint it. So you know when you paint that dresser, you're either going to let it dry, but if you were to decide to go back and decide you didn't like the color you painted, you could pick it off or scrape it off, correct? But if you went ahead and decided to stain your, the piece of wood on the dresser, Instead, you can't go back and wash it off or pick it off. It's embedded into the surface. And that's what XP technology is. It's an embedded surface. To give you an idea, this is a close-up of the resulting surface when the microparticles meet the stainless steel. And you can see how smooth the XP technology is and how bumpy the non-XP technology is. Those big bumps are pieces of soft metal. So I keep talking about harder and softer instruments. And this is actually what explains harder and softer on each of these things. We compare and measure metals based on the Rockwell hardness scale. And that scale can measure anything from a piece of cotton all the way up to a diamond. And a diamond measures at 100 and is considered the hardest material we can measure. So if we look on this chart here, you see that the instruments that we are used to using come in at the 58 to 63 range. And um, that's our Rockwell hardness scale for the Hugh Freedy Everedge and for the American Eagle, Eagle Talon um, instruments. They are comparable in hardness and durability. And that you can tell that by the Rockwell um, number. Now, when you look on the scale, you see that XP technology comes in at an 89. And what that means in plain old English is, yes, it's a higher number than what we're used to, but it means there's 40 times the hardness to that metal as there is to the Hugh Freedy Everage and our American Eagle Talon stainless steel instruments. I think the easiest way to explain this is for you to watch this video. It, and it doesn't have any audio to it. I'm just going to have you watch this and explain a little bit as we go. Um, The XP curette is on the is behind. The upper edge is the one being shaved away and shows the softness there. So basically we're using the upper edge as a as a test stick here with the XP technology. And this is the stainless steel blade result.
And that's not damage on the XP, it's uh, metal shavings. There's the XP edge. So now the XP is going to be used as a test stick. And this will focus in in a second. This is the gouge in the area that was used to scrape against the XP technology. And so here's a couple of close-up pictures from that video. There's the stainless steel instruments cutting edge after it was used as the test stick. And here is the XP technology cutting edge after um, scraping it against the um, ever edge cutting edge. And you just see how little damage that is, and it's all because of the hardness difference. Also, so you know XP technology is not the type. It was There was an independent study done at the University of Toronto. And Dr. Philip Watson conducted it, and he did a stroke test that compared stainless steel to XP technology when used with the same pressure and the same stroke length. And as they did that, they took these photographs. Um, and as you can see, it took XP technology 15,000 strokes before they could even get a photograph. And 1,500 strokes on the stainless steel scale showed quite a bit of wear. So comparing just these two pictures, you can see XP wore at 10 times the rate of stainless steel. So that uh, shows its durability. And we know, as hygienists, we would really roll our eyes if we had to recreate this angle that was originally there. And it was going to be a hugely time-consuming job. It's also pretty unlikely that we'll be able to create, recreate that original edge, right? So we kind of have to work with a, some compromised angles, maybe duller instruments than we want to. And that risks some burnishing calculus and incomplete removal. So I want another question for you. All right, let's bring up this question. How often do you sharpen your stainless steel instruments? Everybody take a second and answer. I know what my answer is. It's once a week on my, my old job where I had stainless steel instruments. I would be in charge of all the instruments in the office. I didn't mind it that much, but it took me probably an hour and a half to sharpen all the instruments where I could have been seeing a patient. That's kind of a problem. So we've got uh, about three quarters of everybody all voted in. Very interesting results. I get a little sneak peek back here. Oh, no fair. <laughs> all right, couple more seconds here for the last couple people. And we'll close it now. And we'll get to share. Uh, every use, 11% of our uh, attendees here said that they use that they sharpen the instruments for every use. Once a week, 33%. Once a month, 40%. Never is 6%. And 9% send their instruments out for sharpening. Okay, that is very interesting result. Right? Yeah, that's very interesting. Uh, this, just so you can compare our results to what was done by RDH eVillage uh, a few years ago, they did a survey and they didn't ask each youth, actually they asked each day. So we kind of line up once we start looking at, we had more people that sharpen once a week, I believe. Is that correct, Shirley? And, uh, yes, we had 33% said that they sharpen once yeah. a week, and 40% said they okay. sharpen once a month, with month, which is I thought was kind of unusual. Yeah, you know, and it does depend on how many setups you have and everything too. But you know, there's it's tough to keep up with, and we all know that. And we know that stainless steel has its disadvantages, but it's what we've had. 
it becomes dull. We need to resharpen that, and it's so so difficult to keep that factory design of the 70% angle that we want to have. Recreating that is so challenging. And one of my real light bulb moments was when I was watching the sharpeners on Sharpening Row and learning that it takes them approximately seven years to master the art of sharpening all of the instruments in the line. And you know, we're taught pretty quickly and uh, don't have a lot of practice. And to keep up is very difficult. So for us to expect ourselves to be this good at sharpening, um, is it, you know, is that possible? And we have some really wonderful information to share with you. Thanks to Lori Lauder, RDH. In April's RDH magazine, she published a findings of a study she did on how hard it really is to recreate the edge. And it's called Our Best Effort. And what Lori did is she sent out 40 curettes in stainless steel to hygienists who rated themselves as very good sharpeners and they had been practicing at least five years. So she wanted to see how well we retain our sharpening skills. And there were 40 curettes sent back. What she asked them to do was use them until they became dull and then sharpen them once and then sterilize and send them back to her. And what she received was a little bit of a surprise to her. She expected to see more of maybe 20% of the and come back uh, within acceptable range of a factory edge. But what she really found um, was 6.5%. And only two of the edges were rated as acceptable when um, they were compared, which was really surprising. So uh, these are a couple of the pictures that are different than what we have in the, or what she has in the RDH magazine. Uh, so these are just some, probably the more dramatic ones for you to look at because some of the less dramatic ones are in the magazine. So you can take a look at both and see what we do. So it's easy to create multiple bevels and rounded edges on these instruments, and it shows we might not be quite as good as we think. Besides, instead of sharpening, wouldn't you rather pretty much be doing anything else? Um, I like to run through meadows. I thought that looked like fun there. So with XP Sharp and Free technology, you actually can go run through meadows and sip on wine because you won't be spending that hour and a half that Shirley spent every week uh, sharpening the instruments of the whole practice. Because these instruments are, are designed not to be sharpened during their whole lifetime. And what happens with that is they are created, because they don't have to be sharpened, American Eagle was able to create them thin like we like them, the way we like them for access, and with a factory cutting edge. So imagine our thin little um, stainless steels that we love, yet we can access them and we actually have the factory cutting edge left. Um, they're very sharp and um, with the sharp instruments we know that we do not get burnished calculus. And I know this really does sound too good to be true, but really once you get into this you will not sharpen instruments again. It's a real paradigm shift for us. Um, we have to start thinking why? Why should we sharpen when we have this new technology to serve our patients better? with the sharpened free XP technology. So here's another poll question for you. Then we'll take a little break from those for a few minutes. Okay, what is the most important factor to you when purchasing new hand scalers? Whether or not oh, they're really? paid. Oh, is it the wrong one? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Exactly one question. This is the have you experienced scaling with sharpened free XP? Sorry. I was out of order. Okay. Have you experienced scaling with XP technology by American Eagle Instruments? So sorry. No worries. Well, we have a nice mix here today. We have been lar a large number of attendees, so that's awesome. And we've got about 85% have voted on this yes or no question. And we're going to wait a couple of more seconds here. And we'll close this one and share it. Have you experienced scaling with XP technology by American Eagle Instruments? 62% said no and 38% said yes. Awesome. Great. And I really commend you all for coming on tonight and learning something new or learning more about what you've tried already. So it's really great. Besides, isn't it so much fun to try out new instruments? 
This is I was double scaling when I was at Career Fusion <laughs> in this picture. Um, so let's talk about the scaling technique because there is a slight difference in technique with XP, and this is what I get very excited about. Let's look at the steps we use with stainless steel instruments first. This is what we can do in our sleep. We place that instrument under the deposit. We get a nice strong fulcrum. We apply lateral pressure. We pop that calculus off the root surface. And I was always very proud of my lateral pressure um, and how well I could pop that off. But sometimes we leave a little bit, and we have to hope that our instrument's um, not dull and is not going to burnish the root, remaining calculus into the root surface. So with XP, your, te your technique is going to change a little bit. Your stroke will be kind of as light as shaving your legs. Or actually, I also really think of it as the same way that we use our magnetostrictive scaler. It has characteristics of a root debridement stroke, really, that light shaving stroke. So there are ergonomic differences and stroke differences here. And they're pretty intuitive when it comes down to it. You're all experienced hygienists. You're going to be able to pick this up without any issue. But it's good to know about it. And then you'll pick it up very quickly. You use that lighter modified pen grass. And then you plane or shave through that calculus rather than fracturing it off. So you use way less lateral pressure. You're still using your smooth wrist rock to make your stroke, though. And it takes about four or five strokes, and you'll slice right through the calculus. And it leaves that smooth calculus-free surface. Because it's such a thin instrument, it gives us a lot more tactile sensitivity as well. And you think about it when you have an exploratory stroke, you have a light modified pen grasp, you're getting a lot of tactile sense uh, transmitted. And that is how it works even with a curette. Not quite as much as it is an explorer, but close. And when you have that lighter touch, you have a happy hygienist. Um, What's not different is the basics we learn in school, our seating positions, our modified pen graphs, how we fulcrum. Um, any advanced fulcrums are fine to use with this, as well as our standard interoral fulcrums, our wrist activation stroke. And we're going to want to give a good seating position using all the principles that we know about proper seating. You know, having our patient completely parallel to the floor, the back and the head uh, on the same plane. And not the, we want to have the patient low enough so that we can only suit our knees under the headrest, but not under the whole entire chair. So those are just a few things to, to pull from the back of your brains from school. Um, now our modified pen grasp is just going to be feather light. It's going to be very similar to what we do, but you will, as I said, it's pretty intuitive. Just lighten up your grasp a little bit, and you won't see the whites on your fingers at all. And I should be able to remove that scaler from your hand as you're working. You're still going to be using a close fulcrum to where you're working so that you have the proper working blade angulation. And you're going to activate that fulcrum with pressure on the fulcrum so we're nice and stable to engage the wrist rock. And this all leads to a lot of benefits for us. You know, we talked about no sharpening as benefit. Uh, we've now modified this technique, and those are great benefits for us. And hopefully those will lead to decreased risk, risk of um, of carpal tunnel syndrome and can lead to career longevity and hopefully even you know, be a production enhancer. Patients actually notice this too. This was a surprise to me. I really didn't expect my patients to notice. But they say the scaling noise is considerably less compared to stainless steel instruments. And probably some of you who have used them have experienced some of those comments from patients as well. I'd love to hear some of what you've heard. I have a patient that really sold me on XP technology. Because as I said, I was a skeptic for quite a while. Um, I have a patient, Kathy, and she is the patient that comes in, and you know you're going to go behind after you, when you see her, because she has to, she has huge amounts of stains because she smokes, but it's incredibly sensitive. So you have to polish and desensitize in case. Then give her anesthetic where you can, and use Orkix to um, fill in the areas, and, Inevitably, I was late for the next patient. She wasn't that happy. She was gripping the chair the whole time. So three months later, I'd been using XP for a while. And when she came in, I asked her to do an experiment with me and see if she uh, was able to tolerate the scaling without her usual armamentarium. And she did go ahead and try it. And I said, of course, we could stop and use it if she needed it. So we didn't. And I kept asking her if she was all right. And she made it all the way through the appointment and was relaxed. 
I noticed she wasn't gripping the chair, no white knuckles that time. And when we ended, she was so happy. She said, that was the best appointment I've ever had, and I really want to continue having that type of appointment with those instruments. And we, I was actually on time for my next patient, too, which was amazing to me. So uh, that was a real fail point for me on using these, because we care about how they affect us, but we really care about what matters for our patients. Let's talk a little bit about ergonomics. Um, we've sure come a long way. Um, I really am so sorry I missed this beautiful um, attire era where we could have worn these dress and hose and especially the stylish shoes. I'm sure you're all sorry too. Um, our poor patients, can you imagine having them sit in those chairs and that they could not have been comfortable. So we've come a long way. We have magnification now to assist the ergonomic posture. Loops have really made a big difference for us. Um, I know I was always hesitant to add them into my practice, but now I can't imagine living without them and treating patients without them. It alleviates so many upper body issues. And of course, how we sit really matters to how we feel at the end of the day. We want to be using that active sitting posture that Stacy is demonstrating on the right and keep that patient's chest and head in alignment, like I mentioned earlier, and parallel to the floor. We can alternate with standing. Um, I know we just made fun of our old time photo there, but sometimes taking a break and treating a patient standing will also relieve your back just a little bit as well and help you make it through your day better. Also ask your patients to assist for access and visibility. I know when I teach, I just try and let my students know that it's okay to ask your patients to turn their head a little bit. They're just there for an hour. And barring any special needs, your patient really doesn't mind helping out. Because we have to keep this in mind. We are at high risk for musculoskeletal injury and repetitive motion injuries. And this is straight out of our textbook. So sitting in our textbook, we uh, know right up front that this is going to be a risk. So using the best tools and the best positioning we can is one piece of protection we can actually control for ourselves. Thus, preventing repetitive motion injuries is tricky, but we can do it with some thought. Um, using, maximizing that use of ultrasonic scalars is so smart. Get some stretching in, hopefully, especially your hands in between patients as you can. Um, using Sharp and Free XP technology really can make a difference for you. And take some mini breaks and listen to your body, too. OK, so we've been just kind of listening, but now you guys get to jump in with me. I want everybody to stand up and give these little stretches a try. Uh, my chiropractor uh, taught these, and they are the perfect hygienist uh, stretches. It's called YWTL, and it's really amazing. It really gets to all our hygiene areas. So stand up, and of course, you want to pretend your head's being pulled up by a string and tuck your stomach in and your butt in all our favorite things to do, and put your hands up so the palms are facing inward into a Y position. Now draw your elbows down into a W with the palms facing towards you, and feel the stretch, and then stretch your arms out into a T. Now remember to keep your, yourself all tucked in, because it gets easy to um, forget by this point. And then pull your elbows into an L. I always feel like at this part I get that mid-back area to stretch that is so difficult to stretch any other way. So hopefully you'll get, be able to keep this uh, little stretch in mind. It's a nice hygienic stretch, and uh, you can help yourself during the day with that. So other ways to take care of ourselves that we've been talking about tonight is with our instruments. Uh, quality instruments make such a big difference in the care we deliver and how we, our bodies respond as well. And we have a tendency to take our instruments for granted I know I don't really think about them much when I'm in a busy day, but when it comes down to it, there are such differences that matter to our treatment results. This is a big picture statement that kind of brought this home for me. Um, the FDA can, has a statement that says our hand instruments are medical devices because they enter the body and they can alter the body in some way. Um, and this statement comes from the issues that have been found with uh, Retipping instruments. Unfortunately, retipping instruments is becoming commonly accepted practice. Um, somehow, practitioners have been sold on the idea that the instrument will be the same after it's retipped, but that's just not the case. 
Um, and so the FDA actually has statements out that you see on the screen that the original manufacturer is no longer responsible or liable and that the instrument has to be labeled retipped if it is. Um, only independent retipping manufacturers retip using instrument used instrument handles. And there's got to be a reason if no U.S. manufacturers retip, right? And the bottom line is, yeah, that, that's true. And the bottom line is there's just too many risks and variables to retipping. So American Eagle, though, has come up with an ingenious solution to the dilemma of retipping and wanting to reuse our handles. And it's called the Quick Tip Cone Socket. This is a really great way to maximize uh, our sustainability and to reuse our handles. As you can see, the working ends aren't permanent. They're threaded into the handle with a long screw. And I'll show you how you assemble it here. You screw it in by hand. And then the last 1 8 turn, you're going to use a special wrench that comes with the quick tips and secure them in with that wrench. The uh, instrument is very tightly in place with no micro leakage possibility. And it's really a great system for several reasons. You can create your own scalar setup by create, customizing your ends. Uh, a lot of hygienists do that. Um, you can code them by procedure, by color, so they color code them. And it's just a very flexible system that rids us of the need to retip instruments. So we talked about the science behind XP earlier, and that science has led to some really interesting instrument development as well. So some unique designs have been created. And we're going to talk about four of those designs here tonight. The four patterns that you see here are exclusive and unique to American Eagle instruments. These four instruments alone make a really great set, and really, you can cover the entire mouth um, very effectively just with these four instruments. And I was a hygienist who needed eight to ten instruments on my tray, plus my mirror and explorer and probe. So I have always had a nice big fat setup, and I am now down to um, being able to work with these four instruments and probably do a better job than I did. Now American Eagle does have a full line of all the curettes and scalers that we are we know and love, and available in XP and in stainless steel actually too. But if there are specific instruments you're looking for, um, they will be there in the catalog or on the website. It's a great place to look. So let's start with the blackjack. This is a big favorite. Now this one was designed, um, it's a similar design to the Montana Jack or the Nevi 4, but it's unique because American Eagle surveyed hygienists before they just copied a design by another company and asked if there were improvements hygienists would suggest for this type of scaler. And overwhelmingly, they got the response that if you added four millimeters or extended reach, to improve posterior access, it would just be the perfect instrument. And so they did add four millimeters to the shank. And it's amazing how much it improves the access to the far posterior areas. You can see here in this demo with the typodon how well it reaches with an extra oral fulcrum to the distal of a second molar there. This is a big favorite. People use it all the way throughout the mouth for all supra areas, interproximal line angles. This is my personal favorite. Um, I've become very attached to the M23 Thin uh, because it is so thin and tactically sensitive. I feel like I can get it anywhere, um, super gingerly, I will add that. It, has a, it is a scaler, and it is a unique design that it sneaks right up to the contact area because it's so thin. It's able to adapt throughout the mouth. It does a great job at line angles on posterior teeth, and I'll show you some pictures of that. M23 is a design that can be made in other, uh, in stainless steel, but making it as thin as this is, is not possible in something that needs to be sharpened. So this is made um, as thin as it is because it's sharpened free. Here it is um, with some access to the posterior area. And the nice thing, I like how it clears the cuffs of the uh, molars. Sometimes we get stuck on those. And this is my favorite way to adapt it. I like to use it in crowded lower anterior areas. It sneaks into those crowded areas. And we know now with the research that's out that areas that are overlapped by more than three millimeters are harboring gram-negative bacteria. 
So we are more prone to periodontal disease in those overlapped areas. So the tiny instrument is what we need to really get disrupt the biofilm and the calculus in those areas. Probably the most unique designs that have been created because of XP technology is the double Gracie kit. There are four designs in this. Two are periodontal access with three millimeters extension and a shorter working end. And I haven't included those, but I wanted to mention that they do exist. We're going to look at the double Gracie posterior and the double Gracie anterior in a rather regular length shank and working end first. This is, uh, think of it as a universal curette. Um, it works like a universal curette in that it can go mesial distal, mesial distal, as well as working on linguals and buckles. But the Gracie design is in there. So we have the best of both worlds. We can get that Gracie access and adaptability with less instrument changes than we've needed in the past with the Gracie design. So here's a close-up of the double Gracie working end, and it really gives you an idea. It comes to a peak in the middle there. So one side of the working end is an 11, for example, and the other side is a 14. So that's how we're able to go mesial, distal, mesial, distal. Um, the double Gracie posterior combines the best of an 11-12, 15, 16, and the 13, 14. So it really covers multiple uh, instruments. And you can also get these in quick tip cone sockets too. It's sometimes you'll hear it called the scandette, and that's a nod to its original uh, design birthplace. Um, but once the anterior double Gracie was born, they added a new name. So now we have the double Gracie posterior and double Gracie anterior. A lot of people say, oh, it's a lot like a Langer. So I wanted to show you a picture comparing a Langer to a Scandet. And yes, you can see that they would be similar. Now, Langers, you change quite often because they're not, they're very area specific. Um, a Scandet, a double Gracie, can cover all the way from the farthest posterior molar area, the terminal molar, all the way through the premolars. And then you can switch to a double Gracie anterior and cover all those. Very efficient. This is the proper grasp and angulation of a double Gracie posterior using an extra oral fulcrum. And here's another view of an extra oral fulcrum. In hands-on classes, we use these type of dots, and we really get to work with these angulations and different fulcrums, too. But this will give you an idea of what can be done with these. The double Gracie anterior combo is the 1, 2, and the 7, 8 combined. They have the same working blade design concept as the posterior. And here it is in action on a mesial, and you'd be able to easily switch to the distal on 2, 7. I know we've gone over this very quickly, but if you would like to, we have several technique and um, instrument-specific videos on the American Eagle Instruments YouTube channel. So feel free to subscribe to that. This one is how to properly use XP technology instruments specifically. Um, there's also a great one that you can see double Gracie's being used in action that Heidi Halverson, a hygienist in Missoula, Montana, filmed. And that one's terrific as well. And you can see the blackjack in use as well. We will be adding to that as a clinical educator team as well. We want, our goal is to educate on the techniques used for different instruments. So stay tuned. We will definitely be adding to that. Now, because this is a unique metal, it does require knowing how to take care of it. It's not tricky, but it's definitely some things to know. Um, although it, they dull at a much slower rate than stainless steel, XP technology does dull over time, like we saw in the stroke test earlier. So you want to use a test stick and test it out every once in a while. Like those fingernails, those would definitely pass in dental hygiene school, right? Um, cassettes keep the instruments in optimal shape, and they protect us as practitioners from instrument sticks, from bio burden. Um, really, your instruments last a lot longer when they're contained. The other thing that's important about XP that's a little different is that we really don't want the working ends to touch, the metals to touch um, other metals. XP to XP is fine, but if you were to bag instruments, the combination of stainless steel and XP, you would increase the chance of corrosion. Each order does come with care instructions, so you're going to get that, and you're going to be able to follow it. 
probably one of the more important things is to make sure that you use a compatible ultrasonic solution. And there are many that are compatible. You just want to make sure that they're phenol free, uh, chlorine chloride free, and salt free. And we have a compatibility checklist that's available on the American Eagle website. You know, in my own experience, offices are moving really quickly through sterilization. And that getting that full dry time between the ultrasonic and rinse and wrapping them and putting them into a, an autoclave sometimes doesn't quite happen. But if we do allow complete drying, the instruments will last longer. Uh, they tend to have just having more moisture in there isn't as beneficial to them long term. And that goes for stainless steel as well. So kind of on to our little last segment here. I'm sure you've generated some questions about XP, and hopefully you're getting ready to type those in pretty soon. This sounds really exciting, right? The fact that we wouldn't have to sharpen anymore, um, the fact that they're long-lasting, and we can do a better, you know, hopefully help our patients even more so with our treatment, uh, have very high-quality treatment. We tend to find roadblocks sometimes and even talk ourselves out of asking our boss for something because it's seems like kind of a hassle. But what I'd like to do is show you a way to just take a very simple plan, a business presentation, that just might help you get your cake and get to eat it, too. You might even have time to. And you might even get a trip to the restroom, which is a real treat during our clinical hygiene days, right? Um, now that we're going through the plan, I want you to keep quick tips in mind, because they have a really big return on investment. Because you can customize instruments. You're going to create fewer instruments in your setup. You're going to replace working ends only as needed. Um, and you've got, you're also being so sustainable with your handle reuse. Um, and you get to keep that manufacturer quality and warranty by replacing those tips. So keep that in mind as you think about your plan. One more question here for all of you to poll. OK, let's get it up here. There it is. What is the most important factor to you when purchasing new hand scalers? Is it paid for by the doctor? Is it the quality of the instrument, the price of the instrument, or the reward, rewards program? So go ahead and have a little vote here. Give us some feedback. We do have about 10 questions, um, Karen. OK. So let's see. I think that's most of everybody here. Let's close that and share the results. The most important thing for these people here on our webinar today with respect to hand instrument purchases is the quality. 65% say that the quality is the most important. 22% said that they uh, prefer or whether or not the doctor is buying the instruments. And 13% said price, and nobody listed a rewards program. So that's pretty Very interesting. interesting. That is. Really impressed with your answers that quality is the most important. That really says a lot about you as a practitioner and how important your patients are to you. Because quality and what we use in every kind of product is so important. So here are some ideas on how to make a plan. Before we run in, I've done this. I, that's why I can describe this to you. I run in the office and go, oh my god, oh my god, I wonder, well, I found this fabulous thing, it's great, and you just blurt out what it is. Usually our employers look at us like we're half crazy anyway. Um, and then they say, you know, how much is this going to cost me? And if we don't have a good answer, we're pretty much set up, setting ourselves up for a no. Um, and while most of us haven't really been comfortable making a plan to present when we want something new, it's really going to be the key to getting the results you're looking for. And when you think about the big picture, this is about your patients. So um, it's a good good thing to get your little pad of paper out or type a list in your smartphone and get at your plan. So think about researching what you want to implement in your practice. And think about what's in it for the practice. Is this right for my practice? Um, then think about who should hear the proposal. Now, does the office manager or the lead assistant perhaps have a piece of decision making because they do the ordering? 
as well as the doctor. So you want to present to all the people who would be involved in this kind of decision. And then think about, you know, does your, does your practice have a budget in place? Or is it an ignore it and it'll go away topic? Because when there is a budget in place, and if you can work with your a team to create a budget for instrument replacement, they can be replaced as needed instead of waiting till they all wear out and have it be kind of a crisis and having to invest in lots of new instruments at one time. Often that gets us to know because that would be a financial strain. So um, that's where I think things like quick tips come into play because we're able to just buy several tips at a time and keep them around so that we can rotate those in and out. And then don't forget to maximize the cost savings when you join the reward programs. You know, buy so many instruments and you'll receive some free from the company. And that does play into your proposal as well. And if you'd like, we have a worksheet available that a American Eagle has put together. It should help you plan out just what your, your dollars and cents and kind of add up to. What's your time worth that you spend sharpening? How much, or how much do you spend when you send out those instruments to be sharpened? Um, and if you're interested in a copy, you can email American Eagle at Marketing. And I have the email address coming up in a couple slides, and we'll send it to you. So if you do all these things, you'll, and they're pretty simple, you'll have a really great proposal for your office. And a great proposal gets you some seriously happy scaling. You'll spend, you know, if you spend that little bit of time and thought planning a proposal out, this photo could be on your countertop, and it'll be your fun new scalers to open. So I want to leave you with this thought, and I know we're going to do questions, but I want you to consider, is it worth your health to maybe invest in yourself? You all are dedicated hygienists, and you're on a webinar on a Wednesday night, for heaven's sakes, and you're in it for the long haul. You know, if you want to be able to practice for a long time, it might be worth investing yourself in thinking about purchasing some of your own key equipment. You know, you're dedicated to your patients. You want to be there for them. Uh, so we want to ensure our health when we look for ergonomically friendly solutions. It's going to help us have career longevity. So keep that in mind, that big picture question, is it worth my health to invest in myself? So I hope your answer is yes to that, because, I, like I said, just by taking the time here to be on this webinar tonight, I know you're really dedicated to your patients and to your career. Um, and just to wrap this up, this was a quick overview. I hope you're pumped to move into the future of instrumentation, and I, I'm glad we have some questions to answer. Um, and if you would like more answers, we have more continuing education to offer in the future as well. Um, here is the email if you would like some more information or if we don't get your question tonight. Um, and also, if you're thinking, gosh, I, I love this, but I want to, my colleague isn't on the call, my doctor may want to know more, our clinical educator team is available for you. You can, again, call or write marketing and ask for an in-office webinar or a course for your study club or your component. We're CE accredited in 18 states, and very soon, stay tuned, all 50 states will be covered. Um, our CE courses will cover even more clinical concerns that we face, uh, a lot more science, and we'll do hands-on practice with instruments and type it on. And we're very excited to be able to share XP technology and the clinical techniques with you. Um, before we go to questions, I definitely wanted to give a big thank you to Shirley Kakowski for her production skills and her invaluable mentoring on this webinar to me. Um, that's part of a Career Fusion uh, membership. Boy, it's, I cannot thank Career Fusion, both Beth and Shirley, enough for the fantastic experiences I've had since I stumbled upon Career Fusion, literally. Um, I really couldn't have done this without you, and I really appreciate all your help. 
Oh, you're extremely welcome. You are you are a person who takes direction, and that's uh, half the half the battle right there. So we are at nine o'clock. So I'm sure we'll have some people be dropping off, but I do want to invite everybody to stay. We'll stay until we get the questions answered. Um, and uh, let's start with how does American Eagle Instrument ensure that the extreme hardness doesn't make the instrument brittle? That's a very good question, and the harder something is, the more brittle it's going to be, and that is part of the key to using the modified technique. Now, the plasma ion engineering process has ensured it is less brittle than some of the issues we used to have when we were trying to create harder stainless steel instruments, because I think that might be part of what you're thinking back to. So just the process itself being so different um, from our heating and cooling, cryogenic heating and cooling processes we've had in the past, make a difference and make it less prone to being brittle. But to ensure that we don't, don't have issues with breakage, we do have you modify that technique. And that's all you need anyway. That's what shaves the calculus off. Does that help, I hope? Um, yes, that is the that was the question. Okay, so um, let's see. We use American Eagle Instruments, not XP. Until we can get our boss on the XP train, can we send our non-XP instruments to American Eagle Instruments for professional sharpening? I don't believe that's an, an something that is offered. Um, you know, Lewis Myers is on the phone. He's our national sales manager, and he may be able to answer that a little bit better than I can um, because I'm in the business of education, and I'm not sure about details <laughs> like that. You don't, you don't uh, know those kind of things. Okay, there's, uh, there are two questions sometimes. for Lewis, and uh, Lewis has his phone muted, it looks like, so we'll wait for him to get that unmuted. While we are waiting for that to happen, um, do you offer complimentary or trial offer? A complimentary I am experience. on. Can, oh, you, can you hear yes, me, Shirley? Yes, no, we got gotcha. <laughs> Yes, sir. Hi. Hi, everybody. Um, okay, so a couple of questions. Uh, the first question, let, let me, um, I wanted to add just a little bit to the question that was asked about brittle, the brittle nature of metals when you harden them. Um, Integral to the manufacturing of XP technology is the inclusion of titanium into the mix. Titanium is a very soft alloy, and when you when you mix titanium in with the carbon, uh, the carbon when impregnated into the stainless steel gives it its extreme hardness. When you when you introduce titanium into that mix, you provide the alloy with a little bit of flex, which takes a lot of that brittleness out. Excellent. Okay. Okay. Uh, the other question was, uh, do we have a? Tr wasn't the question, do we have like a trade-in program, a la the like environment program by Hugh Freedy? Was that the question? No. Do you sharpen instruments? Can people send their uh, their American Eagle, not XP instruments, in to be resharpened? Yes, and the answer is no. Um, we we don't. Uh, we once upon a time deliberated should we roll out a sharpening program, kind of like some other companies have done, and ultimately it was decided that it it would be maybe um, you know supporting incorrect behavior out there, thinking <laughs> that hygienists would wait for you know upwards of 60, 75, 90 days before sending their instruments in to be resharpened, and we just didn't we just felt like that that would that would be supporting you know, not on on not not awesome hygiene. You know, right. so it felt like it was a little bit of a um, of an of an impulse purchase decision type thing. Um, so that was a program that we, as an as an executive staff, uh, we decided to pass on that. Well, you'd also need to have so many more instruments because there'd be instruments out and in, and instruments in. So, all right. So, and this is one more for you, Lewis. Uh, years ago, there was um, an uh, an American Eagle Instruments, uh, I don't know, marketing thing where people would save these feathers and then uh, they would yeah. send those feathers in and then they would get a free instrument. Do you guys still do that? That, that is so funny. That, that program, I swear, it, it's got to be like eight years old. Um, and... Uh, 
people still come up to us with dozens of, quote, feathers, unquote, uh, in their <laughs> hands that shows and say, I want a free answer. Anyway, the answer to that is yes, we are still honoring the old feathers from probably <laughs> 2005. <laughs> yes, we are. Okay. All right. So, um, okay, do you offer Can complimentary? I add one thing to that? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Everyone knows the feather. They don't give out feathers anymore. Um, right. But they do still honor the old ones. Okay. And you do? Do you have a complimentary trial offer for for people? We don't really have a complimentary trial offer for people. Um, certainly, we've you know we 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 get out instruments occasionally at, at conferences and such like that. It's it's kind of rare when it happens. I will tell you this that we have a, an unconditional um, money-back guarantee. Um, so, you know, if, if you want to, as a hygienist, if you want to test drive a, one setup of, of XP technology and, and give us some time to see if it's right for you, um, you know, you can move forward knowing you're, you're protected. I personally have a very strong conviction you will fall in love with this. Um, I rarely, rarely, rarely come across a hygienist who has begin who has begun using XP, who has gotten into this world of sharp and free instruments, who goes backwards to sharpening instruments. It's a very rare thing I hear. Um, but you have the comfort of knowing that there's a money back guarantee in place for you. Great. Uh, here's a, I love my XP. The three dentists and uh, two other hygienists also use them. Great for her osteoarthritis in her thumb, and what are the chances of gouging the root with heavier pressure? Well, really, really good. Was, well, you want to do that? Karen. Okay. Really, with extra heavy pressure, we can gouge the root surface with stainless steel. In. Right. So, it is about our pressure. We don't want to use overuse our pressure, and with XP technology, what I've found is that when I use too much pressure, it's almost counterproductive. It sounds funny, but it doesn't really seem to work as well. So it almost forces you to lighten up to be able to use it. So it's really about staying conscious of using it properly. And like I said, this is a real shift in the way we're thinking about our technique. And sometimes it takes us a little while if we've been practicing a while, like I have. Um, I had to really think about it. And sometimes I'll find myself spacing out while I scale and have to recorrect myself very quickly. So um, that's the key, is to make sure that you're always lightening up. And you'll know when you're not. Shirley, here's, a, here's one more little tidbit on that. This is an interesting analogy that I want you guys to think about. It truly, truly is a paradigm shift. I want you to think of this. If you're shaving your leg and you have a dull razor, which would you be at more at risk of cutting your legs with? That dull razor or a really, really sharp razor? It's without a doubt the dull razor. I know it's that that's right. certainly that way on my face. Why? Because you're 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 amping up your pressure to try to get the job done. So um, I think it's it, you know it's 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 an interesting analogy, um, and that analogy was shared with me by by a hygienist. Um, who was yeah. trying to put it in perspective to me because I've been asked that question before. I was searching for a helpful analogy, and I think uh, I think <laughs> I think that tells the story. Well, that won't work up here in Madison. We've got a lot of Earth mothers up here. <laughs> oh my gosh! <God>. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right. We had, speaking of that, there are a lot of people asking about sharpening the XP instruments. Um, wow. And can you and should you and how long do they last compared to regular instruments and and all of that kind of stuff? Um, Karen, can I take that one? Yes, please do. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. So I refer to these two questions here as the million dollar questions: How long do they last, and can I sharpen them? And one always leads to the other, and it always makes me giggle. To be honest with you, I'm working at a conference. A hygienist comes up. Oh, these are cool gold instruments. What's the story? Oh, these are sharpened free instruments. Don't sharpen them. Oh, awesome. I hate sharpening. And and within 30 seconds, that same hygienist says, well, can I sharpen them? And I always I always giggle. But I yeah. understand why these questions get asked, you know, in these economic times. And certainly, old habits are hard to break. Let me answer the, the first question first. How long do these things last? Second question, 
Uh, it's very, very difficult to answer without knowing how a hygienist practices, how many days a, a week she works, uh, certainly the number of setups that, that she has. Um, so the way that I like to answer that question is, is I flip a question back on the hygienist and I say, let me ask you this, how long do your current ch choice, your preference in stainless steel instruments last year? And they can be our talent stuff, they can be PDT, they can be Everedge or anybody else's. Let's say that that hygienist says, I get a year out of my scalers before I buy new ones. Let's, let's say that's her answer, okay? I can tell that hygienist with confidence. She should expect her XP technology instruments to last about as long as what she's used to getting. In this case, it would be about a year. If she said six months, I would say you're going to get about six months. She's probably turning her instruments over a lot quicker. Maybe she only has four setups or whatever. Um, so can I sharpen this? Great question. Here's the deal. I'm going to ask you a question, and there's no way for you to answer me, but I'm going to ask anyway. Just think about this. Have you ever taken a brand new stainless steel instrument out of the packaging? Again, it can be ours or it can be Everage or anybody. And after you get over the beauty of that brand new instrument and you're so excited and it's shiny and it's new, after you get past that and you look at that instrument closely, what's your first thought? Do you, have you ever looked at that instrument and thought to yourself, oh my God, it's so thick. How am I supposed to get this into any place? Mm -hmm. You ever wonder why that is? Stainless steel instrument manufacturers, American Eagle Instruments included, uh, we make our instruments thicker than you like them to be because we have to account for the sharpening over time. XP is different in that it's designed to not be sharpened. So we ship them from the factory really, really thin like you love. 15% thinner blades than you're used to seeing on your stainless instruments. So the answer to can I sharpen them is, you know what? Gosh, I'd really rather you not. I don't want you to overthin the blade, plus you get into this whole world of sharpen free because either you don't want to sharpen, you're no good at sharpening, uh, there's not enough time in the day, or maybe there's five hygienists in the practice and you all do it differently. So if you're going to get into XP, I would say alleviate yourself from the, from the imperfect task of doing it all together. If you're going to sharpen them, save yourself the money and, and stick with, with stainless steel instruments. That's the company one. Excellent. All right. Can they be used on on uh, implants? No, no, no. Stick with your titanium implant instruments on implants. XP, the, the alloy is, uh, is, uh, is, is too hard. You don't want to be using that on, on soft implants. Can you, use, uh, can you put them in a chemclave? The chemclaves are usually smaller. Uh, Karen, I, I know you know what I'm yeah. talking about. And yeah, the, I do. the attendee is wondering because the, the they're smaller, the cassettes don't fit. So what's what's the answer there? Does American Eagle um, Instruments sell autoclaves? <laughs> yeah, really. No, but there are smaller cassettes, and uh -huh. there are cassettes that would fit in a chemclave. Uh, I think that would work out fine. You'd have to investigate until you find what works with your size chemclave. Because I know I've had one that's fairly large, so they do make them a little bit different sizes. Uh, but it's perfectly compatible with a chemclave. Steam actually is preferred, however. Okay, good. Um, there was a comment here about the sound of instruments, and do these instruments uh, make less sound? Let's see, I can't find out. There it is. With a lighter stroke, is there a different sound perception for the patient? Yeah, yes, there really is. I um, thought that would, was maybe just a little bit of a something that we could say, but the, just a couple of weeks ago, I actually got the chance to clean my husband's teeth, and uh, I was using them, and he said, you know what, I don't hear those instruments like I hear the other instruments that are used every other time. So I thought that was interesting that he actually noticed, and I've had a couple other patients say it as well, and I noticed as a clinician, I don't hear as much of an auditory sound with XP technology because of that lightning. And do you miss that popping, Karen? You know, like the chunking of calculus slopping off, just tink, tink, tink. You know, no, you get to do that. If you have a lot of calculus, you're going to do that first anyway with your 
a magnetic Power scaler, yeah. Your PA, yeah, exactly. So you really get that anyway. Um, I really don't miss it because I know when I use an XP, I feel the extreme smoothness that I'm getting all of the calculus that I sometimes wondered if it was all off, the last little grainy bit, because I have that extra tactile sense and an extra uh, nice sharp feel to the edge. Um, I'm able to feel like I do a better job than when I just fractured it off. Okay. So I've gotten over that, even though I really <laughs> always was very proud of my lateral pressure job. But. <laughs> <laughs> We're just a pile of sickos. Okay. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Lewis, how much are they? How much are the instruments, generally speaking? Yeah, that's the uh, that's the other million dollar question, right? How much uh -huh. do these things cost? Um, a lot less than you than you might think. I think we can all agree that if uh, you know if you're if you're getting into this world of sharp and free, you're probably going to pay a couple bucks more uh, per instrument per instrument, and that's true. I think that's true. The larger dealers. Um, all have SP technology price in the mid to high 40s range, okay? Um, our XP rewards program, which Karen featured on one of the earlier slides, it's kind of our, you know, it's kind of our frequent flyer program. There's no mm -hmm. cost to be a member of XP rewards. It basically entitles the office to show specials year-round. Um, and those specials are buy 12, get 2, or buy 25, get 5. So if you take advantage of the free goods, you pretty much drop your per instrument price, you know, down into that stainless steel. And I'm talking about the high, the high quality stainless steel instrument companies. Um, you, you drop your price down into that range anyway. Um, and as Karen was saying, presenting a, a business proposal for the boss as far as time saved, time is money, um, and even implementing double gracies, multiple instruments in one, and decreasing the number of instruments on your setup, there's a really compelling argument to put in front of the dentist. Right. And I'd add quick tips to that as well. You can even reduce the cost further by implementing quick tips. How Over long? Time. How long is the money back warranty good for? Um, how long do you get to try the instruments? Um, the, the in writing, the money back guarantee is solid for 30 days. It give you a, a solid month to try. Um, you know, no questions asked at that point. If it goes, uh, if it goes past that, then we take them on an individual basis. But uh, in, in that 30 day period, it's a no, it's a no questions asked money back guarantee. All right. Well, I'm going to call it because we're 20 minutes over the hour already. It's amazing how time flies, right? Um, thank you, everybody, for joining us today. We had a great time giving this program. And um, Karen, thank you for doing such a great job uh, presenting American Eagle XP Instruments. And Lewis, thank you, too, for joining us today. Um, I'd like to invite everybody to check out the Career Fusion website, careerfusion.net. And if you'd like some more information about health through the dental hygienist filter, you can listen in to my radio show on crosslinkradio.com. And that has new episodes three days a week. And I'm very excited to be able to bring that to everybody. Find us, follow us, like us all over the Internet. Uh, we're very vocal about this, that, and the other thing. Share the posts that you find. And we'll talk to you soon on another Career Fusion Partner Webinar. Good night, everybody.